Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good? Great? This is not a rhetorical question. Noise. Anyways, what is up? My name is Yanis Bien Pimentel. My first name is Jewish. My middle name's French. My last name's Filipino. And I have none of their redeeming qualities. Are you all ready for a TED Talk on lifelong learning? That actually went better than I expected. Anyways, first off, give a round of applause to our last three speakers. Comparing me to them, they are on an entirely different weight class. These are all wonderful individuals with reputable distinctions under their belts. Me, I'm like what I like to call three C's. I'm a stand-up comedian, I'm a cosplayer, and I'm a college student. Although sometimes I wish I could add in their capable person or competent individual. Some more stuff about me. Um, I love English, I love to talk. And most of all, I love public speaking, which is why I aspire to become an English teacher. However, when you're a Filipino trying to be an English teacher in Hong Kong, let's just say I really don't like my odds. Some more stuff about me. Uh, my dad's a chef, my mom's a flight attendant, and I really like to travel because of that. However, one thing that really annoys me about traveling is countries under tourism slogan. They never tell you the full thing. For example, is there anyone here from the United Kingdom? Anyone? Anyone? No one at all? Okay, is there anyone here from the United States? Okay, just one. Fine, we have a bunch of locals. That's okay. Let me explain what I'm talking about. So, for example, the United Kingdom's tourism slogan is the United Kingdom, home of amazing moments. In my opinion, I think it should be the United Kingdom, home of amazing moments, like Brexit. Another one, Korea, be inspired to have plastic surgery. <laughs> America, everything within your grasp, like the seat of US presidency. How are, how are we all doing so far? Do you all enjoy listening to me? Yeah. Excellent. How many of you think I'm a happy, cheerful, outgoing individual? Please raise up your hand. All right, let's make it even more interesting. How many of you feel that something is very, very, very wrong here? Raise up your hands now. <laughs> Congratulations there, sir. You have won absolutely nothing, yay! But really, as much as a lot of people view me as one of the most happiest people they know, deep inside, I'm actually a huge mess. Uh, if you want to know how much of a mess I am, in all my 21 years of existence, I have actually tried to end my own life 13 times. According to a psychiatrist, 11 of those times have been classified as having suicidal ideation, and out of those 11 times, seven of those times are actually considered as attempted suicide. When you hear a TED or a TEDx talk talking on the grave matter of depression, such as those relatively famous ones done by Nick Vujicic, Abby the college student, or Andrew Solomon, which I may add, first, I hope I would be able to join their ranks, and second, I hope this TED Talk is as just as good as theirs. They tend to talk about depression as a whole, but they rarely brush up on what they have learned having gone through it. They have made it out of the hole, and kudos to them for doing so. Me, on the other hand, I'm still sitting here trying to build a ladder with fellow like-minded individuals. That is precisely what I want to talk about today. Today, I would like to talk about what I have learned going through depression and or being depressed. They say when you're about to die, your entire life flashes before your eyes and plays out like a small movie before everything turns pitch black. The thing is, when you're only 21 years old, you don't really have much of a life to begin with, and that movie's probably playing in slow motion. That is one thing I think we all need, small yet particular thing that I have learned, and that is we all need some time to slow down. In a place like Hong Kong, where everyone has the rat race mentality of gotta go fast, we all need 
to slow down, take a deep breath, because in these moments of clarity, not only do we know more about the world around us, but what goes on inside of us as well. First, when it comes to people feeling depressed or something along those lines, there are two kinds, there are two sides of a coin. Those who want attention and those who don't. In terms of the former, you may call them attention seeking, desperate, or in some cases, toxic. Okay, those are all acceptable terms. In my opinion, yes. These people genuinely want attention. Why? Because it's a cry for help. They want to be acknowledged, noticed, validated. Truth be told, I did not find these feelings from my friends nor family, but rather in six different professionals I have sought out. I still remember when I went to Shung Wan in order to see a psychologist, he asked me, so Yanis, why haven't you told anyone that you have tried to end your own life? And I said, nonchalantly, because nobody ever asked. On the other hand, there are these type of people who do want to tell others about their feelings of hopelessness, depression, and suicide. They don't want attention because they have given up on the inside. Their feeling of worthlessness is so overwhelming, they don't want to tell other people otherwise. I myself have been in that place before and let me tell you, it's not pretty at all. Regardless of whichever side of the coin they are in, if you know someone who's going through depression or something along those lines, one thing that I highly suggest you do is simply be a good friend, slow down, check up on them, acknowledge the people around you. One thing I really like to do and ask them is, hey mate, you wanna hang out? Not in that sense, whoops. But I can assure you, by doing these small, simple acts of kindness, you are giving them something to look forward to the next day. Second, while I find the thought of three mere words depressing in themselves, I actually find them to be actually quite empowering. What are they, you might ask? Nothing truly matters. I could have chosen, I could have chosen to oversleep today. I could have chosen to not make a speech at all. Heck, hypothetically, I could have been already dead, but yet I'm still here, alive and kicking. So why bother? We are all cosmically insignificant, and it's even more so if you believe in the multiverse theory a la Stephen Hawking. The French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre once said, I do not have, nor can I have recourse to any value. I have to realize the meaning of the world and of my essence. To me, life doesn't have intrinsic meaning. We are responsible for creating and searching and learning what matters to us as human beings. Living, loving, learning. You can't do any of that if you're dead. Third, I like to sometimes say that I stare into the abyss and the abyss stares back at me. No, I'm not referring to the ride in Ocean Park, even though that's pretty damn fun to ride on. And one thing that I have and while I have learned many things, none hits harder than the fact that we, as human beings, don't deserve anything at all. Sure, you may say that we should be thankful for those blessings we get from fictional deities like God, Cthulhu, or the flying spaghetti monster, or that degree in underwater basket weaving is a fruit of your hard work. But to me, the reason why we have these things is simply because we are lucky. I used to think that I don't deserve any of this. I don't deserve my friends, I don't deserve my family, because A, statistically, I would there's a one in 3.8 billion chance I would have ended up with them in the first place, and B, they're far too nice to me, even after all the stuff I've put them through. To a certain extent, I don't even think that I deserve to give a TED talk. I mean, if you think about it, don't you think it's hilariously ironic 
that, okay, I can understand most of you are fellow students here, but for those adults in the audience, don't you think it's hilariously ironic that most of you here who are significantly and probably older than I am are listening to a two-bit, good-for-nothing, 21-year-old university student who's only good at using his golden tongue for public speaking, and above all else, he's educating you all at life? I don't even think I'm done with puberty. Here's the thing, I actually don't, and that's okay. I don't deserve to exist or anything, but that doesn't mean I should stop existing, no. I have to continue to search for my will to live in order to preserve what I have as a human being. Nobody cares about me. Nobody understands me. These are some of the few most commonly said things by people who want to die, apart from the top one thing, which is, I want to die. I get where they're coming from. Nobody understands me. Okay, true. Nobody understands your own hardships as much as you. But let's take a, let's take a step back and look. There are 7.6 billion people on the planet. Statistically speaking, there should be at least a few million or even a few hundred thousand who are probably just as depressed as you are. Nobody cares about me. Not even my friends, my family, my parents, etc. Well, now, 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 hold on just for a second. The fact that, first off, you say you have friends means you do have people who care about you. Furthermore, these people who take time to either message you on Facebook or WhatsApp, or these very same people who provide you food to eat, clothes on your back, a bed to sleep in, and sometimes bother you with redundant and meddlesome chores. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. This shows that there are people who actually care about you. But if you disagree with me, then here's the thing. In the grander scheme of things, nobody really does care about you. All that you've worked for, all that you achieve, will ultimately be reduced to dust when you die. Pardon me, I seem to have gotten my merds wixed. <laughs> That's okay. I don't, mm, sorry. I don't deserve, I don't deserve any of this. I really, oh sorry. There are 857, wait, last, in 2016, there have been 857 people reported cases of suicide. How many of you know at least one of them by name? Anyone? These people have been reduced to nothing more than a statistic, a memory. Do you want to be a statistic? I find it highly perplexing that we as human beings are so focused on trying to be a net positive. When in reality, that might even seem to be impossible. However, the fact that we are living, breathing, and existing is already a net positive in itself. The intention of my TED talk was to not inspire, but to rather share my ideas and ideals. People die if they are killed. But here's the thing. You can't really kill an idea. I was the type of person who used to trivialize depression, even though some of my childhood icons like Chester Bennington and Robin Williams have chosen to end their own life. I was the type of person who, whenever someone would post on a message board on how they were going to end their own life, I'd be the person in the comment section who would yell, do a flip, do a flip. Never would I have imagined that I would be one step close to joining their ranks because I have tried to end my own life numerous times. Truth be told, it's a little bit agonizing, really. However, going through these experiences have taught me to improvise, adapt, and overcome to these new situations 
and have overall made me better as a person. After all, what doesn't kill you only makes you stranger. Yes. These days I take solace in pleasant company, self-deprecating humor, and being the metaphorical equivalent of, be, of a tutorial MMORPG figure who helps people who are going through a similar feeling yet are completely new to it. And because of this, I've learned more about myself than I have ever thought would be possible. It's difficult, I tell you, but a pink animated monkey once told me, every day, it gets a little bit easier. But here's the thing, you gotta do it every day. That's the hard part, but it does get easier. To me, it's moments like these that make life worth living. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is my moment. Thank you very much.